Where your fear is, your task is. Live with fear. Make all of your decisions based on fear. If anything, let fear oppress you. Oh, also, actually, I'm oppressed. Sorry, it's just a joke that came to mind. I'm not, it's just a joke. Okay, we're gonna stop joking. We're not joking in this episode. I'm cutting joking actually right now. Hi guys, I'm oppressed. Okay, that's it. That's I'm actually done joking now. Hi guys, my name is Farah. Also known as Farah. Also known as Hippierub. And this is the Hippierub Podcast. Also known as Uncomfy Wumfy Truths. And today's Uncomfy Wumfy Truth is that you need to get your up. And you need to start doing work. But I'm gonna like drag it on for 40 minutes because I can, you know, and like I can tell you to do something, but you're not actually going to do it. But if I give you some snippets of information, you're going to be like, that makes sense. I think I can do it now. And then you're going to do it for a day and then you're going to leave it all over again. So I want you to listen today. I want you to pay attention. Okay. Because what I'm about to give you is honestly the secret magic that no one knows about at all. Yeah, it's true. I have a secret. Uh, the secrets, actually. Um, all of them. Yeah. I don't have a mic today because I, um, I'm home away from home. So I didn't bring anything with me. So my mom's going to be chewing a lot of food in the background. There's a lot of construction going on. So you guys are going to get a very natural ambiance today. It's going to be very down to earth. A little too down to earth because we're actually closer to the earth. Anyway, let's get started with the episode. Time, the most expensive um, gift. Sorry, I'm reading off of the script. I'm joking, I don't even have a script. Time, the most valuable resource that we are all gifted with. Some have a little too much some have a little too little but we all have it and funny enough you can't buy it did you know that genghis khan was the richest man in history i think i speculate that it is so and he's dead if he could buy time he would have already bought time with his like 140 trillion dollars estimated today and we would probably be dead by now because he would have killed us but he couldn't thankfully and so we all have a finite amount of time i'm glad we established that today we're going to be talking about procrastination i actually procrastinated in making this episode but only because i wanted to prove a point to myself um but we are going to define Procrastination. Procrastination is the avoidance and postponement of a task, knowing that it will bring about negative consequences. And yet we do it. <laughs> we do it like we have all the time. But let me mention what this episode is not. First and foremost, this episode is not about the procrastination that you encounter in the school, university, or workplace context because those involve work that you don't necessarily want to do deep down, but you do to obtain a certain thing, like a diploma or a salary. If that's the case, just reward yourself with chocolate every time you do something right, like they do with rats, because it works. But today we're actually gonna be talking about the procrastination that you encounter when you wanna do something for yourself something that no one knows about, something that you yourself enjoy, something that's important to you, something that you deem constitutes a part of your identity. After contemplating for five minutes on the procrastination that has to do with the self, I came to the realization that we procrastinate because there is no deadline, because there is nothing set on a calendar for us to finish it 
by a specific day or time. And so we put it off because it's just not that important right now. Even though we deem it really important in our hearts, but it's like, where do I even start? And if I start, how long is it going to take? And if I keep going, how do I put in the consistent effort to keep this moving? To keep working on this thing that benefits no one but myself. It may benefit society in the long run maybe in the future, but right now no one knows about it except me. And I have to dedicate time and energy towards this thing. So why would I do it right now? I'm just going to put that off for my future self to do. I honestly wanted to make this episode, first of all, as a continuation of my last episode where I talk about, I want to do everything. And I think you do too. And I mentioned how there is a finite number of things that we actually want to do and we can write down on paper. But I also wanted to make it to stress one thing, and that is procrastination is not laziness. Or so I thought. That is the argument that I initially wanted to come here to make. But the more I read, the more dots I connected. I started to notice that it's not necessarily the laziness that we all know too much about. The statement that procrastination is not laziness is true to some degree. But then we have to define what this laziness is, you know? Usually we talk about the laziness of the physical body, but we don't talk about laziness from the spiritual aspect. Laziness of the mind, of the heart. And for this conversation to be productive, one has to understand these nuances, okay? Because I can sniff the comments from a mile away talking about how laziness has nothing to do with procrastination, but there are types of laziness. And so we have to actually dissect everything that we're talking about if this conversation is going to be of any benefit. This also made me realize that the conversation in and of itself is not black and white, because looking at it from the psychological perspective and from the Islamic perspective, there are some uncomfortable truths in the matter that you actually have to face. But then again, we're human and there are these gray aspects that we have to talk about and make mention of. So what is this laziness that I'm talking about? Let me paint a picture for you. This laziness is when you no longer have the energy to think for yourself. All of your energy is put on thinking for things outside of yourself. When you're at school, you're thinking about the assignments that the teacher has assigned to you. When you're at uni, you're thinking about all the projects that you need to finish before the finals. When you're in the workplace, you're thinking about all the assignments and projects that are due on a certain date or your manager is going to be pissed. You're thinking about everything that's outside of yourself. All of this energy is spent on something external, spent on something that doesn't necessarily give you direct benefit. And so then you go back home after a long day of whatever that was and you don't want to think anymore. You're mentally just out of the realm that you're physically in. Mentally, you may be in Hawaii sipping a pina colada, you know, but you don't want to think after the long day of work or school or whatever it was, because you're going to go back the next day and then the next day, and this is going to keep going for a long time. And so you're in this cycle of when are you actually going to start thinking? outside of work for yourself to do something for yourself you know i'm not talking about like painting or hobbies knitting knitting this is how knitting looks like drums that's what knitting looks like to me i'm, I'm talking about the projects that you want to do in your life but that you somehow never got around to doing that you were always too busy to do you were postponing yourself. You were delaying yourself to put things that have nothing to do with your benefit first. You're serving something that doesn't even serve you. I'm not telling you to quit your job. Please don't do that. Although I would love to see if my influence could cause a huge rise in unemployment. But that's, <laughs> I'm actually, that was a joke. I'm not interested in seeing that. Where am I? What I'm telling you to do is to prioritize. Because a lot of people seem to forget the idea of priority. The idea of what actually matters. Like, when there are people 
at school or work, sometimes they put a lot more effort than they need to put, you know. And it's not even for their own benefit or enjoyment, but it's that. Maybe they want validation in return. Maybe they want recognition in a certain thing. And they don't actually want it. They think they want it, because why not? But they don't know that they're using so much energy doing that. You have a finite amount of energy. Energy in us is not infinite. Otherwise, we could probably fly. Energy in us is finite. And so we have to allocate it in the right places based on our priorities. If your priority is actually to make it to the top in your career, and you think that's really going to give you satisfaction in life, it's going to give you the peace that you desire, it's going to make you think that your hard work really paid off for yourself and for society, by all means, do it. But I know a lot of people that are employed just for the salary, and that's fine. But know why you're putting this energy in, why you're putting this time in. It's for the salary. It's not for anything much other than that. And so why put all of this energy towards something that you're actually not so much interested in, but that you have this burning fire for something else, but no one is going to push you to do this something else. No one is going to come to you and tell you, hey, remember that thing that you said you always wanted to start? Now is the time to start it. No one is going to come to save you, basically. And so you're in this loop, you're in this cycle, you realize that all of this energy is spent in the day. And then when you come back home and you sit with yourself, you are like a zombie on the couch, cosplaying as a couch potato. First step to actually fixing that is to recognize that, is to admit to that. Ugh, God, I sound like a therapist, ew, sorry. No offense, therapists. It's just it's not my cup of tea. Do you know what I mean? Why did I title the video the way that it is? Where your fear is, your task is. It's actually a quote by none other than the famous Swiss psychologist C.G. Young. <laughs> Sounds like a rapper's name. I was, just, I was excited to say. See, I don't know if it's Young or Jung or Gung. Carl Young. He is renowned for his work in analytical psychology that has to do with the relationship between the individual unconscious and the collective unconscious. Basically, things that you don't know about yourself in yourself. Does that mean that I agree with the stuff that he talks about or that he says? No, but he does actually make a very good point with this quote that is, where your fear is, your task is. Because this idea that fear actually holds something really important that you need to listen to is also tied to something in Islam. This thing is called taqwa. Now taqwa I talked about actually in the video where I talk about I want to do everything. And it's that it's God consciousness and it revolves around fearing God. But the interesting thing about taqwa is that it also has to do with love. It's these extremas of emotions that are put together to form an emotion like no other. I mean, can you imagine an emotion that is mixed between fear and love? So fear, in this case, is not necessarily a bad thing. Because it could also be something that you really deeply, truly love. But there is fear involved because there is weakness involved. There is the fact that you know of, that you are slacking in a certain area, that you are weak in a certain thing, that you could be improving on a certain thing, and that you love it, but you know there's room for improvement. I'll give you the best example. The best example is Muslims. Muslims believe there is a day of judgment. And we love the fact that there is a day of judgment where we get to showcase our deeds. We get to show Allah what we have done on this earth. But then it's also scary. There's also a lot of fear involved because we know we're slacking a lot. We know we're not doing nearly as much as we could be doing. 
in the ideal world, of course. And I make the argument that Muslims actually love the idea of the Day of Judgment because of the idea of ikhlas, perfection. The fact that Muslims, real believers, they do every single thing for the sake of Allah. They do every single thing, not for the pleasure of anybody on this earth or their validation or their reward, whatever that is of this worldly life. It does not matter except that Allah is pleased with what we do. So when we donate, when we give charity, it's not so that the poor can say thank you to us. They can spit in our face, it's fine. But that Allah saw that act. And so Allah knows. And so we're excited to go on the Day of Judgment for Allah to tell us about that day that we gave charity. And this is the only validation that a Muslim needs. That is the love aspect of this. The fear aspect is what we are not good in, what we are slacking in, what we have a weakness in. And that is where we direct our focus and energy. Now, this video isn't about the idea of taqwa. It's not about the day of judgment, but I'm using it as an example because to me, it perfectly demonstrates this quote of where your fear is, your task is. You're scared of the hijab? Okay, you might have to start building up the courage to wear the hijab. See, that's your fear. That's where you're scared. That's your weakness. So that's what you have to work on. And that's fine. But that's the uncomfortable truth about it is that you're not going to ignore it. You can't ignore it. It's going to chase you because it's in an unconscious part of you, maybe even a subconscious part of you. Ignoring it doesn't solve the problem. Sometimes it actually makes it worse. Also, I'm using the hijab as an example because it's the easiest thing that came to my mind. But I hope I am making sense with this talk. Because fear is a very important indicator that we can't just ignore. We have to actually sometimes listen to, but we also have to discern when to listen to it and when to not. Now, this fear could also be in connection to the beliefs that you may hold of your incompetence or your perceived incompetence. You may not actually be incompetent, but sometimes you're scared to start something really big because you don't think you're competent enough. And it might be true, but, but you really don't think that you're competent enough. So you don't even try. You don't even give it an attempt. Or you don't think you're smart enough. Or you tell yourself the excuse that it's already been done. People before me have already done this thing that I want to do. And they probably did it better anyway, so why should I try? What am I going to contribute to this? Why would my attempt be any better or any more beneficial to society than all of these other people that contributed before me? What am I going to add to this? So in essence, with these ideas and beliefs, you're belittling yourself without realizing. So the best way to remedy this, the best way to face this, is not to do an immense amount of planning in order to conquer this better or to think harder or to waste more time, maybe hoping that an idea would come to you at some point. It's to simply do it. And this practice is seen in Islam a lot, especially through the act of prayer. You know how Muslims pray five times a day? They don't pray based on when they feel like praying. Like, you know, I'm feeling really spiritual right now, so I'm going to pray. But then when a prayer comes, a prayer is established, like, say, also time or fajr, whatever it is, and you're not feeling so spiritual, you're like, I'm just not in the state of praying right now, so I'm actually not going to pray. Yeah, that's what procrastination looks like. Of course, I'm using the salah as, like, a way to emphasize how dumb it sounds, you know, because it really is. But when when applied to other things, to doing other things other than the salah, it doesn't look that dumb on the outside, but it, on the inside, it's very irrational. 
and it's very kind of nonsensical. And it's obvious that you're trying to avoid doing something difficult, doing something hard, doing something that may make you feel a little dumb at first, but it's fine. And on this pursuit of doing the thing that's so important, it's okay to get lost. A lot of people put so much pressure on it to be this perfect journey of, I succeeded because I knew exactly what I was doing. Almost no one knows what they're doing. And it's easy to say, but it's actually really, it's very true. It's just no one actually wants to say it because then it's not going to be so good for them. But it's fine to be lost. It's fine to feel dumb. It's fine to make mistakes. It's fine to have a big loss at the beginning too. Because if you have a big loss, you know not to do that again. Or at least you know how not to do that again. You know how to avoid that. You're just actually getting smarter. You're getting more equipped with experience. You're getting better, you're getting stronger. You don't realize it though. There, it's just masks of incompetence and stupidity that you think you have on and you think you are, but it's actually not the case. It might be temporarily the case, but in the long run, it's not the case. So you can do it now. You can fall, you can look stupid, but then you can learn and you can get up, but you'll fall again. You'll look stupider the next time. And then you'll get up, but then you'll fall a bigger one after that. And that's fine, because that's how you'll learn. Or you can just simply go into your life having not done the thing and then realizing, I always wanted to do that thing, but I just never got around to it. Weird. Or you can regret it later, basically put. Because waiting for the perfect time, for the perfect opportunity to do a thing, it's actually never coming. It's never coming. So for you to rely on that thing to come, the inspiration, the time, when you know you already are capable of doing it right now, you're choosing to procrastinate. It's a choice. It's not an external factor forced upon me. You're choosing. Your whole life is made up of choices. You're choosing to do these things. So your choice to procrastinate is also a choice to not do that thing, the thing that you really want to do, the thing that you yearn to do, the thing that you believe is calling you to do. And so as much as it is uncomfortable and not very full of nice feelings, the best thing to do is to begin. It's not to wait. It's not to dwindle around it. It's to just begin. Thank you guys so much for coming to my TED talk. Ironically, I actually have to pray right now. I was talking about prayer and I have to pray right now. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna wait to feel something to pray. I'm praying right now. And that's that. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.